Hey everybody, Derek from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So I want to finish up the whole idea of, of uh, baptism for the dead with a couple of videos that are actually in the Come Follow Me for this week. They are amazing. One from President Nelson and the other one from President Eyring. And then I want to tie that together. So watch these back to back and they are awesome. It is important to know why the Lord promised to send Elijah. Elijah was a great prophet with great power given him by God. He held the greatest power God gives to his children. He held the sealing power, the power to bind on earth and have it bound in heaven. God gave it to the apostle Peter, and the Lord kept his promise to send Elijah. Elijah came to the prophet Joseph Smith on April 3rd, 1836, just after the dedication of the Kirtland Temple, the first temple built after the restoration of the gospel. Joseph described the sacred moment. Another great and glorious vision burst upon us for Elijah the prophet, who was taken to heaven without tasting death, stood before us and said, Behold, the time has fully come, which was spoken of by the mouth of Malachi, testifying that he, Elijah, should be sent before the great and dreadful day of the Lord come to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, lest the whole earth be smitten with a curse. Remember that the names which will be so difficult to find are of real people to whom you owe your existence in this world and whom you will meet again in the spirit world. When you were baptized, your ancestors looked down on you with hope. Perhaps after centuries, they rejoiced to see one of their descendants make a covenant to find them and to offer them freedom. In your reunion, you will see in their eyes either gratitude or terrible disappointment. Their hearts are bound to you. Their hope is in your hands. Brothers and sisters, Wendy and I are delighted to be with you today. We love families. We love temple and family history work, and we love you. The family truly can be a place for everything from safety and refuge to fun and happiness. And that shouldn't surprise us because of what we believe about the sanctity of the family. As church members, our interest in family history work has been motivated by instruction from the Lord that our ancestors cannot be made perfect without us and we cannot be made perfect without them. That means we are to be linked together by the sacred sealing ordinances of the temple. We are to be strong links in the chain from our ancestors to our posterity. It's wonderful to turn the hearts of the children to their fathers by telling important family history stories in ways that are accessible and memorable. However, if we leave it at that level, we haven't really done enough. If we know who our ancestors are and know marvelous things about them, but we leave them stranded on the other side without their ordinances, such diversion will not be of any help to our ancestors who remain confined in their spirit prison. 
and that means sacrificing time we normally spend on other activities. We need to be spending more time in the temple and in doing family history research, which includes indexing. It is my testimony that however fabulous your life is right now, or however discouraging and heartbreaking it may be, your involvement in family history and temple work will make it better. It is my testimony that when we show the Lord we are serious about helping our ancestors, the heavens will open and we will receive all that we need. I would like to extend a challenge to each one of us. I invite you prayerfully to consider what kind of sacrifice, and preferably a sacrifice of time, you can make to do more family history and temple work this year. Brothers and sisters, together we are engaged in the work of Almighty God. He lives. Jesus is the Christ. This is His church. We are His covenant children. He can count on us. So obviously you can see the importance of baptism for the dead. I think I mentioned yesterday the number of exclamation points. I actually went in and counted just between verses 19 to 23. There are 15 exclamation points. This is something that Joseph is very passionate and very excited about. For example, you look at verse 22, which is one of the most often quoted verses, but you put this to the context of baptism for the dead. Brethren, shall we not go on in so great a cause? Go forward and not backward. Courage, brethren, and on, on to the victory. Let your hearts rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Let the earth break forth into singing. Let the dead speak forth anthems of eternal praise to the King Emmanuel, who hath ordained before the world was that which would enable us to redeem them out of their prison. For the prisoners shall go free. So you can see again how important this is. This cause, shall we not go on in so great of cause? Now, President Nelson today has said the greatest cause out there is called the gathering of Israel, where members of the church are gathering from both sides of the veil. We do what we can here, and we do what we can to help those out there. So, I would ask the same thing, shall we not go on in so great a cause? And there are a lot of causes out there, so many causes, different things out there, whether they be social or political or whatever. And here's a prophet saying, of them all, the greatest cause is the gathering of Israel. And you can then put everything else out there under that particular umbrella. So that cause is so great a cause. And so let's work together for that cause, which is amazing. That baptism for the dead and the gathering of Israel. Hey, thanks for a great week, guys. Thanks for subscribing to our channel. If you haven't already, go out and do that. Thanks for watching these messages. Thanks for sharing these messages. And go check out our amazing gospel theme, Socks So Comfortable, at bombsocks.com. We will see you guys next week. Thanks again. Godspeed. Bye-bye.